Hello everyone, this is Mark. Welcome back to my channel. Today, the Balcony Gardener visits the Cloud Forest at Gardens by the Bay. Gardens by the Bay was part of the nation's plans to transform its garden city to a city in a garden, with the aim of raising the quality of life by enhancing greenery and flora in the city. First announced by Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong at Singapore's National Day Rally in 2005, Gardens by the Bay was intended to be Singapore's premier urban outdoor recreation space and a national icon. Being a popular tourist attraction in Singapore, the park received 6.4 million visitors in 2014 while topping its 20th million visitor mark in November 2015 and over 50 million in 2018. In this episode, we are going to explore the Cloud Forest, one of the world's greatest architectural and botanical wonders. The Cloud Forest is a climate-controlled conservatory which houses tens of thousands of plants. And we are going to be exploring what we can as we go along the way. Upon entering the cloud forest, the first thing that I noticed is the waterfalls. It is located at the 3,800 square meters vertical mountain that is full of beautiful plants. Okay guys, we are at the very first level of the cloud forest. And what I'm gonna do is to try to identify the plants that I come uh, across with. And I don't know so many of them, but I will name some of them and put it in the screen. And um, there are so many varieties and different plants from all over the world that is in the dome. And say for example, the Schiffler that you just saw there, I've never seen it before. It's a variegated Schiffler. It's much bigger than the Schifflers that I know. This one is a tree fern leaves and probably one of my favorite trees inside the dome. It kind of gives you that prehistoric feels like, you know, you are taken back to the dinosaur years. <laughs> So on this corner, there's a different types of begonias over here. There's a begonia rex, all the different other species of begonias that I don't even know. But if you look around, it's incredible. There's just so many of them. What I notice everywhere is that you can see a lot of the maiden hair and um, it sort of like really uh, helps in making uh, the other plants pop up and it's got this really vivid sort of like yellow green color that makes the other um, leaves like um, the one that is next to it, the begonias, really pop out its colors. One of the plants that really stood out for me is the philodendron varicosum. You will see more of them inside the dome than any other uh, plants. 
they are climbing up through this vertical wall and they seem really happy and healthy over here. Another plant that is doing so well inside a dome is the Philodendron Vecii. I really wish I had this plant, they're so beautiful and the patterns are just divine. Look! Look how massive this tree is. It's a cypress tree, it's a Cashmeriana cypress tree and look how big it is. The one I have at home, which is a Thuja, is somewhat similar to this family. But um, this one is just rare and incredibly beautiful. We are still at the first floor of the dome where all these beautiful pine trees are. These different cypress trees are just stunning to look at and I could spend hours and hours here. Moving on to this corner over here, there are so many Calathea Zubrinas. I have them at home and there is no way that I could make them grow to this level. Mine are just a smaller version of these guys. Amongst all of their attractions, this one is probably my favorite uh, one to recreate. I like the idea of being in a tunnel of plants and as you walk through, there's more plants that would come your way. Such as the monsters. Nothing too rare of plants, nothing too expensive, but it delivers. It gives you pleasure anyhow.
Okay, now guys, we're gonna go to the Lost Word section of the um, forest, um, Cloud Forest. Let's go. This crocodile fern is just hanging in here. Look at that. And it's really growing so beautifully here. There's so much on this corner. It's hanging on the moss. And um, I don't know if you can see it, but it has got that uh, the crocodile skin characteristics to it. We are now on our way up to the topmost section of this uh, cloud forest and it's called the Lost World. We have so many selections, collections of different smaller plants over here such as the uh, Discadias, Hoyas, Nepenthes, um, Peperomias, um, or the dendrons uh, varieties as well of different colors they have it here we also have some uh, collections of moss over here the cabbage tree is also located here which is quite amazing and um, there are many different type of pitcher plants over here as well These are the rhododendron collections that they have over here. I was talking about it a while back. And it comes in so many different colors, different variations. It comes in yellow, pink, some purple, and some are green as well. And it would stretch along the cloud walk right at the very end of the Lost World section. So this is not a very rare plant but I love this plant so much because I have them the philodendron imperial green and the one that is variegated on the left side 
This cactus is hanging on the walls as well. It's everywhere around the cloud walk. I just don't know what to call it, but um, they're quite, there's quite a number of them around.
there is just so much to see here it's like plant overload i think that um uh, you need a day to totally and completely see everything it's just too much but um they're all beautiful
Finally, we have reached the end of this plant tour at Cloud Forest of Gardens by the Bay. I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did. There is so much more to see and so much more to explore inside the Cloud Forest. We don't have any time anymore, but um, also there are other different varieties of plants that you would be very interested and willing to find out more about. And I encourage you all to visit the Cloud Forest at Gardens by the Bay. See you again next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.